Hey guys, so today I'm gonna to be doing a pregnancy update for you. I am 37 weeks pregnant as I am filming this as of yesterday. So you guys should be seeing this upcoming soon. It'll be like 37 and a half weeks. And I can't even believe I'm at this point this is a really like big milestone in pregnancy, at least for me, because I'm giving birth at a birth center. And so it's not like attached to a hospital, it's a standalone birth center. And when you give birth there, because I'm with midwives, you have to get to 37 weeks before you can do that. Otherwise, if you give birth early, then you have to do it at the hospital. And the reason that I wasn't super stoked about that is because I don't know any of the providers there. I wanted to stay with the midwives that I've been seeing for the last nine months. So I'm really excited to say that I've finally reached 37 weeks and that means that I can when I go into labor not if but when I go into labor I can give birth at the birth center which is so crazy it's nuts that that's even happening I also have to address the fact that yes we are in the new house we have moved I can't even believe it because it just it feels surreal to be here because it is we have actually owned this property for about a year now and it finally is 90% finished. It's not all the way done. The upstairs bathroom is not done at all. Uh, there were some issues with the type of wall that we chose. We chose this really difficult material to work with. Didn't know that, wouldn't have done that <laughs> if I knew, but we did. And so now because of that, it's pushed the timeline of that bathroom off at least until probably February. But you know what, I just don't care. We had to move in and we're pretty much getting settled. And I'm sitting here with a fire in my new like living room area. And this room is not like fully set up by any means. This is the one room that's like really not. We still have to get a couch. <laughs> we have a couch. This house is interesting because it has two different like living room areas. They're not, but it's like the formal living room and the family room. I don't know, we've never had anything like that before, but we put our couch in where the TV is, which I think makes sense. So today I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about pregnancy stuff. I'm gonna to talk to you guys about where I'm at, show you my belly and just tell you kind of how I'm feeling and go over symptoms and everything like that. And we can talk about the house. I am gonna be doing a house tour, definitely 100,000%. Whether it will be on this channel or our other channel, I'm not 100% sure, but if it is on our other, like I will make sure that I mention it here somewhere. And you guys can, if you follow me on my other social media, then you'll know. Speaking of following me on my other social media, if you don't, Instagram stories, is kind of the place if you guys are wanting to keep up with me especially after the baby gets here that's gonna be the place that you are gonna to want to follow me if you don't because that's where I'm gonna be updating I'm likely gonna take a while off after this baby gets here just so that I can you know enjoy him and settle into motherhood and this new place and everything it's just gonna be a huge transition and I'm gonna put zero pressure on myself YouTube wise like take an actual maternity leave you know and not stress about it and everything like that so if you guys want to stay up to date I don't think I'll be making formal videos probably after I mean you never know you never know how things go maybe I'll feel antsy to get back to work I don't know but um, if you guys really want to stay up to date with how things go in the next couple of months Instagram stories is going to be the place for that and Instagram in general so it's the worst app ever especially since their new update it's been horrific terrible I hate it so much the app is turning into a complete hideous mess but at least we have Instagram stories where we can stay up to date so I am just going to jump into the video but before we get into the rest of the video I have been partnering up with HelloFresh for like the last two years now you guys have heard me talk about them a million times you'll hear me talking about them a million more because I love their service so much truly our friend came over the other day to help us <laughs> pack up the house and move. He was talking about how he has been getting like this meal prep service. And he's like, have you ever guys ever thought about that? And we're like, yeah, we get HelloFresh. And we literally sat there for like 10 minutes. It sounded like an ad. <laughs> like the, he said, is there cameras in here? Cause it, that's how much we like it. Cause that's how we talk to our friends about it. It's seriously such a good, amazing program. If you guys have never heard of HelloFresh before, they are a meal delivery service. They deliver meals directly to your door each week. And in each box, which is an insulated box, there comes all of your meals. And you also have recipe cards. Cards. On each recipe card, you have the six steps on the back. It's really easy, they're really quick. I'd say each meal takes about a half hour to make. There are also quick recipe options that are like 20 minutes to make, but I'd say just on average for us, it's about a half hour. It doesn't take a ton of time at all, and you don't have to be like some incredible chef. They're really easy to follow recipes, and they're so, good. Everything is really healthy and really well balanced. They have recipes for everybody. So they have vegetarian, low calorie, and they have kid friendly recipes every week. Also, because you have 
chosen your meals ahead of time. You don't have to do any of the meal prepping and planning. It's just right there. You think, okay, what are we gonna have for dinner? You pull out the bag, you pull out the recipe card and you have everything you need right there for a meal. Because HelloFresh has the pre-portioned out ingredients in there, there's less food prep for you and there's way less food waste. You can change your delivery days, you can change your food preferences or you can skip a week whenever you need to. HelloFresh has also donated 2.5 million meals to charity in 2019 alone and they're also stepping up their food donations this year with coronavirus going on. So this week we had the Italian Sunday supper which was so good and classic and just so delicious and fresh and it was really well balanced with everything that was in the meal. So we filmed this one and it was delicious. It was a classic Italian meal really really yummy and I love the tortellini absolutely delicious we also had a meal this week we did not film and we so wish we would have because it was probably one of our favorites truly so good it was the harissa sweet potato pockets unreal you guys they were so delicious and I would get them time and time again uh, hello uh fresh <laughs> that was a bite Mmm. Mmm. That was a bite. You were hungry. Mm-hmm. I'm a shallow. Oh, it's crunchy. Yum. You want one of these? Okay. Hello, fresh. Delicious. Hello, delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I think the best thing about HelloFresh for us is going to be, especially during having this little baby, because it's going to be meals that are nutritious, that are healthy, and that we do not have to think about. We are not going to have to go to the grocery store and go shopping. We're not gonna to wanna to leave. And it's just gonna be so nice to have like that fresh food because we're, you know, we're making freezer meals and stuff and we're getting freezer meals going, but those are all things that have to be cooked and they don't have like the fresh veggie side. And so it's gonna be so nice just to have that delivered directly to our door. We're not gonna to have to think about it, it's just gonna be easy and that is gonna be something so helpful for us. It truly, you guys, I really want you to know, is that good. HelloFresh is delicious. So, so good. If you guys are interested in checking out HelloFresh, I'm gonna have the link in the description of this video. You guys can go to hellofresh.com and enter the code RawBeauty90 and that will get you $90 off, including free shipping on your first box. And I wanna thank you so much to HelloFresh for continuing to support my channel and for sponsoring this portion of the video. And now we're gonna talk about babies and my body, <laughs> which things are a change in. This is the kitty's first day out at the new house. We've had them locked up since Wednesday. They have acclimated to that room it's like we, we saw it on um that my cat from hell i think is the guy or jackson galaxy and he was talking about that you want to give cats a home base and let them get fully acclimated to that area before you just like let them out and wow what a difference we put their cat boxes cat scratchers a rug a bunch of areas for them to perch um you know food and catnip and we made it super cozy for them in there and they really got used to that over the course of like four or so days four or five days and then we slowly started letting them out a little bit at a time a little bit a little bit and today is their first full day out in the house and they're great they're doing wonderful like they couldn't be doing better. Everybody is not skittish. Everyone's napping right now. They all seem like totally happy. So it totally worked. Okay, so 37 weeks pregnant and it is getting so close. The baby is literally kicking so much as I'm sitting here. I, I need to talk about that first. This baby is doing huge movements in my belly, but every time I turn the camera on, I swear to you, completely stops. I cannot catch it on camera. And this is like a phenomena, apparently. I was talking to my friend about it yesterday. She said, all babies do this. It's so irritating. The second I turn the camera on, he stops moving. And I'm just, I want to capture it so badly, you guys. I just want to show you guys some of these humongous movements that I'm feeling and seeing. And as soon as the camera comes on, it's, it's done. Like. He knows, I don't understand how he knows. You don't, how do you know? About at 35 weeks, I went to the midwife because I woke up, well, I went to bed with cramps. Like it felt like period cramps and I always get them in like my lower back. And that's exactly what this felt like. I could not differentiate. Like it was, it was what I felt like were actual period cramps. I had to lay on a heating pad. And then that night I actually got sick and threw up. And I was like, oh my God, am I going into freaking preterm labor? So I went to the midwife the next day. I actually called and I asked them like, hey, is this concerning? They're like, come on in, we're gonna check you. And she did a cervical check and everything was like completely closed, high, 
and firm. Like she was like, you're good. You're not going into preterm labor. Like I'm pretty positive. And um, after that cervical check, I did bleed for like two or three days. Very light, little bit of spotting, but it freaked me out. And she said that was normal and to be expected um, because the cervix at that point in time is very, 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 very touchy. Like if you even so much as like look at it, it can bleed. She was like, so it's it was not a concern at all. She wasn't concerned about it. Thank God that wasn't preterm labor. Don't know what the heck. It, that was the day after we had gone and taken like a couple of maternity pictures at the pumpkin patch. And I did like sit on the ground for an hour. So you, maybe it was just back pain, but it didn't, you know, there's a difference. I mean, for, for you who gets cramps, not everyone gets cramps, but anyone that does, you know how there's a difference between cramps and back pain. This was totally cramps. So I don't know. All I know is that it ended that next day, like in the evening, and I have felt them off and on a couple of times since then. And the only reason it's majorly concerning to me is because I needed to get to 37 weeks. For my for my own self, I just can't fathom, be like for myself personally, I can't really fathom going to the hospital where I don't know anybody and um, being like completely confident in that. My, my whole thing was I really want to give birth at the birth center I mean, if something happens and I have to transfer, that's totally fine. I just didn't want it to be like preterm labor and then in like sort of an emergency situation and I don't know anybody and it just, we weren't moved into the house yet. I really needed it to be 37 weeks or later. And so today we are there and I'm so, so, so happy that we made it to 37 weeks. I cannot even tell you. It's such a weight that's lifted. I feel better too, because when I went to my midwife, um, I see three different midwives and whichever one is on call when you are giving birth, that's who you get. And I saw one of them and Gosh, I just really like her. I almost, I hope that she's the one. They're all lovely and I'm, I'm totally fine with all of them. But this one, I just feel like we vibe. And she um, was like, you know, generally, most of the time, babies don't come when you're not in the right headspace. It's almost like your body knows not to. And so that made me feel so much better. Made it to 37, we're into the house. We still have a lot of stuff to get done here, but things are moving. His crib was delivered yesterday and dresser, which is so exciting because now I can fully get things going. So today I'm washing all of his clothes and then I'm gonna go like roll them up and put them in these little, like we, I got these little dividers off of Amazon and I'm just gonna like start putting his dresser together in nursery. I'm gonna set up the snoo and get that all going. And like the house is coming together. I mean, it is not fully done, but it is, pretty good like we've we've really made a lot of progress in the last few days i can't wait to show you guys it looks beautiful and what's so cool is that after we moved in here i could not feel less homesick i thought that i was going to feel homesick and like i like and i don't know i just thought that it wouldn't feel like i was at home and both zach and i completely agree we feel like completely at home here we don't miss our other house at all even though we lived there for seven years you would think we would miss it but no it's just we feel totally comfortable here totally at home just it's wonderful i couldn't ask for a better transition it has been great and i feel like it was it was just meant to be like, we really love it here and it feels like our home. And I'm really excited about that because I didn't know how it would feel. I cried a little bit thinking about moving out of the other house, but as soon as we're here, not, not even a little bit of homesickness, it just feels right. The baby feels extremely low, like low, low. I don't think I've dropped yet. I was walking around. So we, I, I wanted to do one final like run at a grocery store to get a bunch of freezer meals and stuff like that. So I we went to Costco. <sighs> By the end of the Costco trip, which I feel like was only about 40 minutes, Minutes, I was hurting like I I could barely walk I got this hideous side cramp like it this baby is low and I am out of breath I can barely walk it's a lot but I'm just I mean some days I'm like oh my gosh what the heck is wrong with me why can't I and Zach will look at me he'll be like babe you're nine and a nine months pregnant and I'm like uh Oh, <laughs> duh. You know, sometimes I'm like, oh my God, why am I so winded? Yeah, I'm literally nine months pregnant. I can't even believe it. That sounds so wrong to say. It doesn't feel like I'm saying something truthful. It just, I don't know. But I guess I am at literally nine months pregnant. Yeah, the baby feels really low, especially to the point where when I feel like I have to pee, it is an emergency situation every single time. But the amount of pee that comes out of me is laughable, you guys. Like it is, it truly feels like I am peeing my pants and a gallon of liquid is about to come out. I will sit down and it's like, like that, like literally a tinkle. And I'm like, hello, it's constant. I wake up multiple times in the night to pee and it, I will be, I will have to pee so bad that I'm like 
hunkered over and barely able to walk. And I'm like, oh my God, this is gonna be a true gallon of liquid coming out of me. And it literally never is even kind of half of a maybe kind of shot glass. Like it's a pathetic amount. I do not have a urinary tract infection. I drink so much water. I'm really not swelling bad or anything at all. So far, so good. I'm feeling pretty good. The lightning crotch, you guys. I cannot describe what this lightning crotch is like. It is truly in my heart and soul, unbelievable. It, it shoots me up out of my seat and at multiple points through the day, I will shout out loud like, ah! because it is so jarring. If you've never experienced lightning crotch before, I actually asked my midwife about it. I told her like, I'm having a lot of lightning crotch. She was like, it's very, very normal. It's basically what she said is baby's head. So baby is head down right now, which is amazing. I'm so excited about that, but it's baby's head pressing on these nerves that you have. She explained it, they're like on the side of the pelvis down in like the birth canal area and his head pushes down on those and then they send like jolts of electricity through my vagina. It's really, really, really intense, you guys. If you've never experienced lightning crotch, oh my God, it is, it's just like nothing else. It truly feels like somebody, I don't know, electrocuting you inside for just a brief second, maybe sometimes up to two seconds it'll last where it's like, ah, and it just, it just, it knocks the wind out of you how it feels and nothing else can compare to that feeling. It's not that bad. I'm making it sound so terrible. It's just, it's so short lived that it's not that bad, but sometimes I'll get like 20 of them in a row, like coming every few seconds. And it's just, wow, it's so, it's so intense. And so, yeah, the lightning crotch has been pretty amazing this last two weeks, especially just wow. Gestational diabetes wise, I'm doing fine. I definitely had some days, I talked to my midwife about it as well, where it's weird. Um, I read about it online and it said that this is extremely normal. And she said the same thing, but basically um, my numbers were solid, you guys. Like I'm talking always under 95 when I would fast and when I would wake up and have, take my fasting sugars and then always under 120 after eating, which is exactly what my doctors wanted everything to be. And then and so I was getting my meals down. I knew exactly what I could eat, what would raise my blood sugar, what wouldn't. I definitely, there are foods that you don't think would that do raise mine. So like they say whole grains are really good. Whole grain bread does not raise mine. If I eat like one piece of like Dave's toast, completely whole grain, like the 22 grain one, some whole grain bread. So, so at first for a while, whole grain products, I was perfectly fine. I could eat them, no issues. And so I would go to like Jersey Mike's or Subway or whatever and get, I would always get a hot sandwich. I'm not eating lunch meat. You know, I, I know all the rules. I would eat a very small portion of it and then just eat them a couple times throughout the day, like a quarter of a Subway sandwich or a half of a regular size Jersey Mike's, which would be like a quarter of a Subway sandwich. And I was fine. I could have that, no issues. My blood sugar would be stable afterward, afterwards, no issues. Well, then I did it again. I had that same exact meal again, like four weeks later. And when I tested my blood sugar uh, two hours later, it was at 165 and that was so high. And it was exact same meal I had eaten previously where my blood sugar was completely normal afterwards. And so I Googled it. This was right at 35 and a half weeks. And it said that some people with gestational diabetes during from 32 to 36 weeks can experience like high numbers on meals that you were fine with before. And that's exactly what happened to me. Really, really high numbers for no, seemingly no reason. And so that was concerning, but it, it's gotten better. That's the thing, it's not consistent. And I don't know why, but sometimes meals are making my blood sugar go higher. I'm still controlled with diet. I'm just eating extremely low carb now. And I'm not keto by any means, but I'm just eating way less carbs. I'm not doing the Jersey Mike's thing anymore, even though it was whole wheat bread, it should have been fine, but it wasn't. And honestly, at this point, I'm just, like eating what I know for a fact will keep my blood sugar down, like salads with chicken, or uh, I'll have like jalapeno poppers, which is just like jalapenos and cream cheese, or I'll have, you know what I mean? Like things that I know for a fact are not going to make my blood sugar higher. And I've been fine. Uh, and I only have a few more weeks left of this, so I'm not gonna complain, but I will say, <sighs> I haven't had cravings my entire pregnancy. Take it or leave it. All food uh, sounds equally good to me at all times. Nothing has really thrown me out there where I'm like, oh, I need that. Very, very rarely. This last end of pregnancy, my cravings are like horrible. And I think it's the holidays where just the amount of delicious food that I'm seeing, the amount of delicious food I'm thinking about constantly, 
the thought of Thanksgiving food, Christmas food, eggnog, pie, pastries, cookies, all of this, because I can't have it, sounds like the best thing I've ever heard of in my entire life. Like it truly sounds like I, there's nothing I want more in my entire life than to eat all of these things. And it's, it's killing me <laughs> not to. I want all the Thanksgiving food. I want stuffing. I want pie. I want everything that I cannot eat. I want so badly. I want boba more than I've ever wanted anything in this entire world. I could drink a Thai iced tea with boba pearls in it every single day of my life. And I, I had a couple of drinks of one once. Oh, uh, maybe when I was 32 weeks pregnant. Whenever we did our 3D ultrasound, we went and to a restaurant and Zach got a Thai iced tea with boba in it. I cannot tell you, I have craved that every single day since. It was the best thing I've ever, ever put in my mouth. I, I, I can't even talk about it. There are, that's what I'm craving. Sweets, candy, sugar, not even so much candy, but Twix. Oh my God, yes, Twix, give me Twix. I want pie, I want yellow cake with chocolate frosting. Oh, what else sounds so good? Everything sounds good to me. Cherry pie, pies in general, just I want pie. I want like food, I want real food. Cause you guys, it has been since 28 weeks when I got diagnosed with gestational diabetes, I'm 37. So 10 weeks I've eaten just like fucking vegetables. And sometimes I can have pasta in small amounts. Like there have been very few times I can do. It's so weird. This is what I'm talking about with gestational diabetes. Some things raise my blood sugar that you wouldn't think would like brown rice through the roof. I couldn't even believe how high my blood sugar was after trying brown rice. And I didn't even eat an unbelievable amount of it. Like Zach made homemade coconut curry, like Thai coconut curry with tofu. And there was a bunch of veggies in it all the base of the meal was completely low carb. Like we made sure the coconut milk had basically nothing. The curry had nothing. The tofu is nothing. The veggies were hardly anything. And all it was, was like a helping of brown rice, not even like a cup of it or anything. And my blood sugar went way up after that. Beans make my blood sugar go way up, but then like whole grain things don't. It's so weird how it doesn't kind of make sense to me, but whatever it is what it is. And I'm just, I'm dealing with it, but we're like going on 10 weeks of me not having any sugar or, oh my God. I just want fruit. Oh my God. Bananas, mangoes. Oh my God. I can't talk about food anymore, but it's like to the point where I have a list and a running list in my phone of all the foods that I'm going to eat. Macaroni and cheese. I want to sit on a couch with the office playing with my baby on my lap. And I just want to sit there and like down an entire flat of macaroni and cheese. And I think I might. So off of food, sorry, sorry, I can't help it. It's just like, God, I've talked to you guys about that. We took the positive birthing company's uh, digital pack. And in there, they talk about your birth preferences checklist. We have my ideal birth. What would it look like? Okay. If we transfer to the hospital, what does that look like? Do you see him? He's like upside down. Oh my God. Stop. He's a wee boy. Oh, he's so happy to be out. Oh my God. He's so happy. So you have your birth preferences checklist of everything. If I have a C-section, here's what I want that to look like. If I have, you know, blah, blah, here's what I want it to look like. And so you have everything that you want. It talks about like the pushing stage. Like, do I want coach pushing or do I want to just go naturally and, and try it myself without people, you know, counting down or doing any of that. And talks about like the third stage and delivering the placenta. You like, you have all of that on your birth preferences and we did it. I finally made it and it is ready to go. We're getting our birth center bag packed. Um, we have a couple of things on the way and just sort of winging it, hoping that we get that all done in time. <laughs> it's sitting right over there, but it's only like got a tiny little bit of stuff in it. Cause I just don't know. You know, we have to pick out like his outfit is going home outfit. What do you do? So you don't want it to be too fluffy, but he's also give, you know, be coming at the end of November, early December, by the way, my app that talks to you about like your due date and everything like that. It was like, you have two and a half weeks basically. And I was like, what? <laughs> oh my God, you're right. So we're down to the wire on that. We're actually gonna go to Target tonight and get some things that we feel like we're, we need and just kind of get odds and ends, probably get some more diapers and wipes and stuff like that just to have and have on hand. And you can never have too many, you know, and you can return them if you need to. So there's that. As far as my mood and everything, how am I feeling? I feel like I need at least the next two and a half weeks, but you know, I don't think I'm ever going to feel ready Everyone says you're never ready. I don't know that I will feel ready. Um, we'll see. Right now, I feel like we're getting there, but <sighs> I don't know. I mean, will I ever feel ready? I don't think so. 
Uh, but I think that the fact that we're in this house, we're here, we're getting settled, everything's getting done, and we're at the point where, you know, like clothes are getting washed and things are getting done, I feel way less anxious than I did. I just need another couple of weeks, get everything completely in order, and we should be good, I guess. I'm really nervous. I don't know what I'm nervous about. I guess I'm more just nervous about the life shift of it's not just going to be me and Zach anymore. It's going to be me, Zach, and another human being who once he moves in shall never move out again for uh, basically 20 years, which is so crazy to think about. I don't even think in that way in terms of my cats, you know what I mean? I'm like, oh yeah, you just live here now. But this is a human, like I've never lived with another human before. I mean, we had a family member come live with us when we had some stuff you know, happen a couple of years ago, but it was only for like six months. And you know, you do get used to it and it is a transition. And that was even like a way older, you know, it wasn't a, a tiny child or anything. It's just weird to think that once this little baby moves in, he stays here, he's ours. He doesn't go anywhere. He does, he's not here for the weekend. He's not here for a month. He's here forever. And that just blows my mind. I cannot understand how that's actually going to happen and how once he's here, like we just get to keep him forever. This isn't a trial run. <laughs> like this is, you are, you are here and he just exists in our family now. And it's just weird, you guys. It's so weird to think about that part of it. Just like knowing that one day we're gonna walk through that door right there with this baby and he's here forever. I just can't imagine that moment. And that moment is like weeks away. Like the fact that I know for a fact, this is not a question because of you know how things go. In one month, four weeks, 100% this baby will be here and this baby will live in this house. What? I just can't understand it. I don't understand. Even though I'm like saying it, even though I know, I just can't. You guys, it's, it's insane. My mood, I went from crying all the time. I talked to you guys about that in my last pregnancy update where sobbing constantly, uncontrollably about everything. Just, just crushed at everything. Everything made me cry. My husband, you know, walk out of the room and I would get offended and I would, I would get butt hurt and then cry. The thought of moving made me cry. The thought of this baby made me cry. I am done with that. And I've moved into everything makes me annoyed. <laughs> so instead of everything making me cry, now everything makes me snap. And I, <laughs> you are such a boy. You are such an absolute. Look at him just sitting on me. Oh my God. Everything is making me like ultra irritated right now. And it's like, Zach and I have been just like little snappy at each other. And it's not any reason really. It's literally, I'm, I don't know. I'm just, it went from, from like touching emotions to like, <laughs> don't say it again. <laughs> I'd be hopeful to get out of this stage soon because I don't like being irritated constantly. It's very annoying. I'm annoying myself. We actually got the Duna gifted to us, which was so lovely by the company. And I'm so excited by that. If you guys haven't seen it, it's basically, it's a car seat that's also, it just doubles as a stroller. You just click a button and wheels pop down and it becomes a stroller. And I'm very excited to have that. We are not gonna be going very many places. In fact, I think we're probably gonna end up going on lockdown. Starting tomorrow, I think our governor is talking about it. By the time you guys see this, it'll probably have already happened. I'm not sure even if it's true or not, but I've heard tell that, that things are shutting down again. I mean, this is going to be across the country. I don't even, maybe across the world. I'm not hundred percent sure, but you know, cases have been spiking and stuff. So, oh uh, yeah, it's uh we'll see, but we're not, we don't really go anywhere anyway, other than we're going to be going to like some doctor's appointments and stuff after he's born. I'm really excited to have that. It's really, really cool. And I feel like it's perfect for us to have the Duna. It's just like the exact thing that we needed. I'm not really somebody that's, I don't know, I couldn't pick another stroller, first of all. There's too many choices, too many choices for baby things, way too many choices. And I've just gotten to the point where I feel like we have enough and I'm probably not even gonna use half the stuff I bought anyway, which is just, honestly, I'm a first time mom. I feel like it's part of it. And these companies know that and they will sell to you if they can and they did and they got me and that's fine. That's pretty much it. That's kind of everything that I had on my list to talk to you guys about. Uh, I'm, can't believe we're at this point. This baby can come any day now. I hope he does not. I hope he stays in for at least, I just, I want three more weeks to where I'm like 40 and a half. You know, get past Thanksgiving. Just get, you know, just 
That would be really nice. It would be really nice to just have that time, but I understand babies come when they're ready. And you know, it's not something that I have any control over at this point. And I'm just trying to do as much as humanly possible now. Really, really hard for me to do anything because the second I stand up, the second I start moving around, I get Braxton Hicks contractions so bad. Like my whole uterus is just tight. And they are exactly what they explain them as online. I can't even, they say they feel like just tight. Yes, it feels just like a hard ball. Your stomach turns into a hard ball and it's not painful. It's uncomfortable in the way of like, you can tell you're having one. Even if you don't touch your stomach, you're like, yeah, I know I'm having a Braxton Hicks right now. Like you can just tell. I get a lot of them. I That started, I don't know when, but like in the early third, I'd say like 32 weeks-ish, I started getting them a ton. I mean, I get them constantly, but when I sit down, they stop. When I do any changing, they, they stop. Hey guys, editing Christy here. I forgot three things that I'm experiencing really, really big. And I thought that I would want to add them. I was like, oh, I'll just add them in my next update. Well, there might not be a next one. You never know. Wait, maybe I won't have one. So I thought I would mention it here. Uh, my heartburn is through the roof. It's unbelievable at this point. It is to the point where I woke up in the middle of the night the other night and had to go run to the bathroom and throw up. So bad. I mean, it's just like liquid fire coming up my throat um, and, and, and that's not getting any better. It's actually getting worse as time goes on. My skin is actually really rough right now too. I don't know what's going on in that arena, but I'm getting lots of spots. So that's fun. I'm really excited about that. I am having muscle separation on my stomach. So it's called diastasis recti, I think is, maybe I'm pronouncing that incorrect. Um, I've done enough research on it now and I post about it on my Instagram stories, but basically my muscles are separating on my stomach. And I guess this is very common to make room for your uterus. It's like up to 60, 70% of pregnant women have it happen and it's happening to me. So that's fun. Um, I only noticed it at first because it was the literal sensation of skin ripping. I couldn't, I couldn't, put my finger on it other than to say it felt like burning, ripping, stretching sensation in my belly. And then yesterday or day before I put my hand on my belly where I'm feeling that sensation, which is like right above my belly button. And it literally dips in right there. I can like feel where my muscles are separating on my stomach. So there, there's a total like space. <laughs> it's not just like a solid like bump now. There's, there's definitely a dip in there. So that's happening. I also have experienced this a few times and it's really, really, really unfortunate. And it's my least favorite pregnancy symptom that I've experienced so far. It is horrific. I hate it. I will like, I would do anything to not experience it and it is insomnia. It was night before last. Last night I slept good, but night before last, I didn't fall asleep until 5 a.m., but I went to bed at midnight, and I was laying in bed the entire time just trying to fall asleep, but what's happening is I start to fall asleep, and then I jerk awake, and then I jerk awake, and then I jerk awake, and I do that for five hours, and then um, I don't know what's causing it necessarily. It feels like anxiety. I think it's anxiety. It feels that same way, like my brain won't shut off, but it is shutting off, but I'm having that like hypnic jerk where I'm... <gasps> It, it's and it's not like I'm falling. It's just like my brain won't let me fall asleep It's so frustrating. It makes me like tear up because I get so angry that I'm not able to fall asleep it, It's happened. I think four nights now where I get No, no sleep at all. Maybe like two three hours and uh, it's pretty terrible And I know all the comments are gonna be like get ready because you're never gonna sleep again. I know I don't need to hear that. I've been told time and time again how little sleep I'm about to get. So trust me, I know. There's no way you can prepare for that though. People are like, sleep now. It's as if, as if sleeping now prepares me for no sleep later. It doesn't really work that way. It's not like I could sleep 48 hours in a row and then just be awake for 48 hours later. You know, it doesn't work like that. So it's the worst pregnancy symptom that I've experienced so far. It is so terrible. I It, it maybe doesn't sound that bad, but like when you're, laying there unable to fall asleep and your body is just twitching you awake but you're tired but you cannot sleep oh my god i've never had that experience in my life i'm somebody that can sleep i sleep it's almost as if i drank like a 24 ounce red bull and then laid down to go to sleep my body like my body and my mind aren't communicating my mind is just racing at a million miles an hour the only thing that I've been able to do during those times to get back to sleep, I am taking magnesium now because I do have restless legs sometimes. Magnesium has helped hugely, just so big. Um, but not only just that, I noticed that if I eat something, like if I go downstairs and I eat something that's high protein, so like string cheese, I can fall back asleep sometimes. And I have to sleep on the couch, elevated. I don't know what the hell is happening, but it's frustrating. But I slept last night. I slept really good last night and I'm very thankful for that. So 
those are three things I forgot to talk about in this video that I thought that I would mention here. Yeah, that's kind of it. Uh, I'll show you the belly and where everything is at. So these pants really suck me in. Uh, you might not think so, but they, they really do like kind of keep everything up. So I'll pull them down a little bit. But this is what 37 weeks looks like. It's doesn't look any bigger, I don't think, than you guys probably, I don't know, maybe. It feels different. It feels more torpedo-y, like more sticky out -y. I, I like it. I like it very much and I'm gonna miss it. But it will be nice to be able to move again. And people always talk about like baby up in the ribs. This baby has not been in my ribs at all the entire pregnancy. This baby is way down low. Like all the movement I feel is right here in this little center area and in my lightning crotch. Like sometimes I have to stand with my legs crossed and like bend over like this, it's so pathetic. All right, that is 37 weeks pregnant. I can't believe I made it to this point. I for sure thought I was gonna go into preterm labor like I just swore because I was so nervous of it happening. But again, another thing I thought would happen and did not. That's just anxiety. So something I need to work on. But I hope you guys like this video and that it was somewhat fun to watch and chat. I wanted to keep doing these up until the end. Maybe I'll do them each week from here on out just until baby gets here. That would be kind of fun. And I'll let you guys know any changes that I feel or anything like that, but I'm feeling pretty good still. And you know, just trying to use what energy I do have to nest, nest, nest. And I'm definitely nesting. I shampooed chairs at midnight the other day and shaved them with a little like razor to get all the little pills off of them. The baby's coming soon. <laughs> I thank you guys so much for watching. And again, thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring the beginning portion of this video. And you guys can check out the link in the description of this video or go to hellofresh.com and enter the code rawbeauty90 at checkout. And that will get you $90 off, including free shipping on your first box. And I thank you guys so much for watching and subscribe if you, you know, wanna stay updated, see any more videos from me. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram if you guys are looking for more frequent updates because that's gonna be the place. So, all right. I thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you at my next video.